Hi, my name is Magnar Nordahl and I'm an ATI captain and instructor. In this video, I will show you a walk around of an ATI 72600. All ATI variants are very similar. The largest differences are that the ATI 42 is shorter than the ATI 72 and that early variants have four bladed propellers while the newer ones have six bladed propeller. A walk around is, of course, more than kicking the tires. The purpose is to ensure that the aircraft is safe to fly. And we will look for any damages, leaks and missing parts, or maybe loose screws. And we will make sure that all covers are removed. OK, here we go. I'd like to start with the main door. And what I'm looking for, especially if the apron has some gravel or sand, is the ceiling of the door because there might be some sand or small pebble or gravel falling down on the ceiling so therefore i will check that there's no damage here and if there's any sand particles i brush them away and continue further down the door and uh, you will see there is an emergency light at the lower step so i check that it's operative we move forward along the fuselage, check there are no wrinkles in the skin. And we are coming to the left main gear uh, fairing. Here is the hydraulic bay. The emergency brake accumulator should show minimum 1600 uh, PSI. Here is almost 3000. And he said you check the doors are closed. But I like to open the panel doors and take a look inside look around and make sure there's no leaks here in the hydraulic system. You can see one accumulator there. And there's one more door. And behind this panel, you will find the uh, hydraulic tank. You can see the level here on the hydraulic fluid. Take a look around, it's dry, no leaks. And you can also see uh, I just made it come a bit closer. Here's the leveler showing the bank angle of the aircraft. We use this to determine the fuel level in the wing tanks if you measure it the manual way. So now you know where it's located. There are also three more panel doors further down. Just make sure they are closed. The main gear, check the tire condition. No damages and it's not worn out. And here you can see the wear pins of the brakes. And also have the brake temperature indicators. Then you look inside the uh, gear bay and uh, make sure it's no damage, no leaks. And here on the top of the strut you can see the max takeoff weight of the aircraft, in this case 23,000 kilos. You can also see the pressure on the tires. Here is 123 psi. Check the condition of the gear doors. The main door has a rubber seal. You see the folding door. We look at the gear from the front, no damage. We can look at the struts and uh, here is the up lock and it's open. This can be opened manually from the cockpit by pulling in the lever. In case the gear does not come down in the normal way. And the up lock is attached to this point. And here is the weight on wheels switch. Now there is weight on the wheels and uh, there is no connection. When you get airborne, the uh, arm swings forward and then there will be a contact and that gives the indication that we are in the air. And at the wing root, there is a seal called the flaps rail seal. On all the ATRs, it was called the banana seal. 
We continue looking at the wing, all the fairings for the flaps, the exhaust of the engine. We just continue outward. Here you can see the visual flap indicator. So if your flap indicator fails in the cockpit, you can, the pilot can look out and look at the wing and they can see the position of the flap. Aileron, and we have five static wicks, four on the aft and one on the side, on the horn. And here is the nav light, there is also a strobe light attached next to it. Continue forward, look at the leading edge, the de-icing boots, and here is the air intake for the ventilation tank. And there is also a magnetic uh, dipstick here. And here is the ice detector. The engine nacelle, check that all panels are locked. And we come to the propeller, check the spinner and each propeller blade one by one, both sides, especially at the tip. So we turn the propeller and just uh, check every blade carefully. There are rules for how much damage is accepted for the blades. The leading edge is made of titanium and aft there is a composite. And further up there are uh, electric heating pads. And we check the other side as well. Here is the air intake for the cooling of the DC generator and the exhaust is here. Check the leading edge and again we can have a look at the wing route. You see the temperature sensor. And next to us on the fuselage there's a Kevlar layer next to the propeller blade. So in case there is ice forming on the propeller and gets shed off, it will hit the Kevlar and not damage the fuselage. And here is the air intake for the air conditioned cooling unit. And down behind that uh, grid is a small fan which is sucking in air when the aircraft is on the ground and it's running until the airspeed is 150 knots. And inside is the flap valves, they open automatically by air pressure and uh, directs the air to the heat exchanger for the air condition. Everything is good, there are no bird nests, no cats inside here. And then we look underneath. And you will see uh, one of the main landing lights. And underneath, abeam the landing gear, you see the beacon light, the red one. Looking to the left, here is the overboard valve, which uh, directs cooling air from the avionics. There are some antennas underneath. We check the in place and we move forward. And here is the wing light. It illuminates the leading edge of the wing at night. Check the emergency exit. It's flush and locked. And here is the emergency light for that exit. Here is the panel door to operate the cargo door with instruction how to close it. And the cargo door itself is supported by a strut and secured there. Moving forward, we will see uh, the angle of attack vane, which is connected to the stone warning system via the communication hatch, which provides uh, ventil some ventilation and we hand the documents like the lodge it through that hatch. And underneath, here's the oxygen discharge you can see the green circle inside, and that means the uh, oxygen bottle is charged. This small hole provides ventilation of the batteries. Moving forward, here is the nose gear. Going up, here are the static ports. They are for first officer, captain, and the standby system. Higher up, we have the ice evidence probe. It's on the captain's side, and it shows uh, whether we have ice on the airframe or not. You can also see the windshield wiper. Right 
And here are the P2 tubes. The upper one is for the captain instruments and the lower is for the standby instruments. The nose cone and the nose wheel has two wheels, two taxi and takeoff lights. You check the tires, the uleo leg, and check the condition of the doors. There are four doors, two of them are open now, and ahead of them are two other doors which are open and the landing gear is uh, extending or retracting. And here is the pitot tube on the first officer side, and the static parts. Here is the angle of attack sensor for the first officer side. And below are connections for uh, ground power. Right now we are receiving DC power. So 28 volt DC power is the standard power supply for ground operations. The ground staff can also connect a headset here, so it can communicate directly with the pilots in the cockpit through the intercom. There is one uh, connections for AC power. This is only used for maintenance to provide uh, AC power for hydraulic pumps, etc. And below is the VHF antenna. Move aft. Here comes the uh, emergency exit. We have the wing light. And we're coming to the gear fairing. And here is a ground connection point for air conditioning. And again, we check the landing light, this on the right side. And here is the refueling panel. It's a fully automatic refueling system. And right now we can see, uh, we select 1,800 kilos. We can see how much is on each tank. And when you refuel, the fuel will be distributed evenly to both tanks. Okay, look up on the wing. Again, we have a temperature probe. We have the access panel for the fuel pump. We, there are two points for uh, draining of the fuel tank and one point for uh, measuring the fuel level manually. Check the leading edge and the uh, engine uh, panels. You can also see the old cooler flap are located here, they are closed. We have the propeller and the propeller brake is on so we cannot move the propeller blades. So we have to take a look up all the way. Engineer intake is free, spinner is okay. We check the cover doors on the other side and then we follow the leading edge outwards. And if this had been an ATR-42, there will have been a refilling panel here. And here is the air intake for the ventilation of the tank. And we're coming out to the wingtip. And again, we have a navigation light. We have five static wicks. And the rest of the wing is just copy of the first wing. We are coming to the main landing gear on the right side. Again, we take a careful look inside. Everything good, we check the struts. No leaks, no damage. The doors are okay. The struts are good. And we check the tires. And again, we check the brake wear indicators. And they are also well used. And we have the temperature sensors.
And here is the panel door for refueling. Looking up, now we have a better look of the temperature sensor and um, access to the electric fuel pump. And we have the drain valves and we have the point for uh, measuring the fuel level manually. And we also have the seal for the flap here. Continue aft. Here is a marked cut here in emergency. This is for the rescue and means that there is nothing inside the wall which can be a safety risk like high current cables or fuel lines or other things. There are no wrinkles on the fuselage. And we continue to the service door and it has an uh, emergency light illuminating the ground. The door is now closed and this door is used to serve the galley and the aft cargo compartment. Underneath is a tail bumper. It's uh, attached to a shock absorber and when the aircraft is parked on the ground we attach a probe called the tail probe and this is just a precaution in case the aircraft is loaded heavily in the aft. The ATR-42 doesn't have this. It's not necessary. And here is one of the outflow valves which is uh, open and closed by the pressurization system. And when you check the tail bumper, you check there is no scratch marks underneath in the red area. And if there are scratch marks, you look further up. And if there are scratch marks, you check the red lines. And if they are damaged, then you need maintenance. Because that means you have a very hard contact with the ground. You can see the entrance door opposite side and here is the other outflow valve. And this is a vent from the galley. They have a small sink and they can uh, pour out the liquids here and it's recommended only to pour out water in flight otherwise you will spray the tail with coffee or whatever it is and that's not so nice. Here's the tail section and you can see the rudder, you see the horizontal stabilizer. We have the logo light on just for the walk around. And you can see the antenna for the VR and localizer. Underneath is a door to a compartment where you have the flight data recorders and uh, also have access to the flight controls in the tail. At the very end, there is a navigation light. It's, there will also be a strobe light here. Walk around. We are almost finished now. We take a look at the other side of the tail fin. And here is the access door for the potable water for the lavatory. And the lavatory has a service point under here. And that concludes the walk around. We are back at the door and we can enter the cockpit and prepare for the flight. But that's another story. And that's all for this time. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy landing.